What's up, team? Coach Shauna here. Okay, I am going to go over rowing technique. You all have rowing today in your workout, and I want to cover some of the things that I am looking for when you hop on this bad boy. So first things first, there are settings that I want you to have dialed in for you specifically. Each athlete has a setting where you're going to put your straps and has a specific damper setting. Let's talk about that damper setting first. So as you evolve as a CrossFit athlete, you are going to start to play around with this little handle right here. What this handle does is it allows air to come into your flywheel and it, it creates a, a feeling of resistance, right? But it doesn't actually give you a stronger pull. It just gives you something to resist against. It makes it harder to pull. So sometimes when we're first starting out, that feedback is what we need to understand how to drive aggressively with my legs and finish with my arms. But as you become more proficient, there is an ideal setting for you. And for most of us athletes, it's going to be between five and seven for your for your damper wheel now if i turn it down super low it is going to be extremely easy to pull my handle if i put it up super high it's going to be a lot harder okay so again most athletes especially women are going to find that they are the most comfortable between five and a seven personally i like it at uh, between a five and a six and i consider myself to be a pretty proficient rower so after I figure out where my damper setting goes right here. I am going to hop on my rower and I'm going to set my feet straps up. So my feet straps should be sitting uh, over about the middle of my shoe. And this is going to help keep my feet in so that when I'm pushing and rowing, my feet stay against the platform here, right? Don't come up because coming up is losing that potential transfer of power. So I want to be nice and snug in here. The only time I'm going to tell you to not strap your feet in is if you have a fast row and you're transitioning quickly. So if you have, you know, maybe 10 calories or less or 100 meters or less, uh, uh, combined with other things, then I'm going to tell you to keep your feet um, unstrapped, if you will. All right, so you're going to strap those feet in. I like mine at a two. Uh, most female athletes, you're going to have like a size six to a size eight foot. You're going to find that's about where you're going to put your feet. Now, rowing technique. The row is very similar to a snatch or a deadlift or a clean, right? It's legs and then arms. I see a lot of athletes that want to pull first with those arms. And if you were in the water, which is what this is emulating, you're rowing, you're pushing, and then you finish with the paddles, right? So that's what we're going to do here, but we're on the, the row erg. So I want a big leg drive, and then I want to finish with my arms. Now I want to let my handles go first and the flywheel go, catch up like a yo-yo, so that when I scrunch back up, I have something there to pull. So I let my arms relax, and then I go back in. Legs and arms. Arms and legs. Now as I become more proficient with this, my goal is to keep this little number in the bottom. You're going to look and it's going to see 19 or 28 or 32 S over M. Those are strokes per minute. The more efficient I become, the stronger I become, that number, I'm going to be able to go further in the water, so my meters, or create more power output, my calories, with less pulls per minute. So most of my athletes, I'm looking for between 22 and 28 strokes a minute. And of course, as you are, you know, going for like a hundred meter all out, then you're going to be pulling and pushing really hard while also um, your, your revolutions, if you will, or your strokes, if you will, will be very fast. But generally speaking, I want to challenge you. Can you create really big pushes and pulls, but slow, okay? 
So these are the tips that I give my athletes when I'm coaching in the gym, and I want to encourage you to try them out on your rower at home and then see how they feel. For today's workout, your 2,000 meters, I'm looking at something that is steady and maintainable, right? If you go balls to walls and kill yourself your first 500 meters, then you're going to slowly die off and maybe you're not going to be able to maintain that pace. So I want you to go out, maybe shoot for like a 210 to a 220 split for your 500 meter, and you're going to see that on that uh, second window of your monitor. You'll see it shows you what your split time is for your 500 meters. So I'm looking at something between a 210 and a 220 is going to be a, a good steady clip. If you're still figuring out how to row, maybe you're up around 230. If you've become a more proficient rower, then maybe shoot for that two minute or even under if you can sustain it. Then you're going to walk for two minutes and then you're going to go for another 200 meter, or excuse me, 2,000 meter row. All right, I hope these tips help. If you guys have any questions, you know where to find me. And uh, yeah, have an awesome training session.